Welcome to the Get Published Podcast, sponsored by Birdie Consulting Group. To get more information about our coaching, publishing, executive ghostwriting, and podcast production services, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. Hello, I am Paul Birdie, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Get Published Podcast, where we help authors get published with a proven system that works. And today, it is my pleasure to introduce someone who I think very highly of, and in my opinion, she is the Oprah of Intermittent Fasting. Uh, She recently released her second book called Fast, Feast, Repeat, the comprehensive guide to delay, don't deny, intermittent fasting, including the 28-day fast start. So it's my pleasure to introduce you to now New York Times best-selling author, Jen Stevens. Well, hi, I'm so glad to be here. And I actually just counted up on my hand. And this is actually my fifth book because I had four that were self-published before Uh, this. So yeah, this is my first traditionally published book. But yes, I had um, Delay, Don't Deny, and then Feast Without Fear. And then I had two that were like workbooks, journal type books, and then, um, then Fast, Feast, Repeat. So technically number five. Nice. Well, congratulations on that. And again, congratulations on this being your traditionally published book and the fact that you've hit the New York Times bestselling list. I mean, that's huge. It is huge. And, you know, the moment I found out, of course, it's what I hoped for. I really hoped it would happen. And um, we had a June release date. My fingers were crossed. But um, you just really never know. It all depends on what's what's happening in the world at that time. And I'll never forget the moment that I got the phone call from my literary agent. And then the, the big head honcho literary agent was also on the call. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is the moment. It's happening. And she said, um, you know, we just want to congratulate you on you know making the New York Times bestseller list. And for the rest of your life, and even after you're dead... <laughs> This is a distinction that means something. And it just gave me the chills because, oh my gosh, so exciting. Well, there's a lot of time. There's a lot of investment with this. And I love the fact that this was traditionally published because you and I talked previously. You've been on the show before and you've been on our summit. And the thing is, these companies reached out to you because of the the following that you have built. So tell us a little bit about that because you really have built something special. You know, I, I follow the, the quantity, I mean, I said that backwards, I follow the quality over quantity approach. You know, I have um, some very large Facebook support groups, and my goal has never been, let's see how large of a group I can build. My, my goal has always been, let's see how high quality and supportive of a group I can, I can build to provide, you know, um, positive interaction and support to people who are willing to be part of a supportive, high quality community. So, you know, I haven't tried to build the biggest community I could. I mean, I could, we could be huge if I did that. But instead, I wanted to, um, to build a community where everyone was glad to be there. They felt like it was something special, that supportive, you know, you're all welcome. We're glad that you're here. We are going to support one another, you know, no bullies, that sort of thing. The kind of thing you see, you know, that the Internet is infamous for. We've, we've wanted to be the opposite of, of that. So we've really kept the groups positive and supportive. And that's, I really think, been the, the key to everything. You know, we are a community. We feel like a community. So I, I really built the community first before I even wrote my very first book in 2016. I started building my community in 2015 with really no goals at the time of, hey, I'm going to build a big community and then I'm going to write a lot of books and then I'm going to be a New York Times bestselling author. That was not even on my radar. I just thought I want to build a supportive community where people feel like they're a valued community member. You know, the um, the movie, if, if you build it, they will come. And that's what I've really found to happen. But, you know, even though the one group is over 300,000 members strong now and altogether we have over 400,000 members in our community, we have still kept that supportive, helpful, positive environment. And, and I think that's just the key to the, the whole thing being, being successful. You know, we're all hanging out with people we want to hang out with in real life, even though we're virtual. 
Well, and the thing is, too, you also built this with a not only a strong fan base, but a committed base where you were able to get um, multiple moderators, which was awesome because you have people constantly monitoring the group to make sure, and especially with this being an election year, um, just making sure that nothing really gets out of context and nothing really goes south, so to speak, where you guys are able to get in there immediately and take care of any potential issues that may arise. Well, that's true. I mean, my groups are a, a politics-free zone, and you know, we're we're all together because we are supporting intermittent fasting. And yeah. you know, a lot of my real-life friends are leaving Facebook in droves because, you know, no matter what side of the political spectrum you find yourself, the negativity from all sides can just become, you know, too much. And the you know the fighting, we don't want to see that. And so, we we just want to support you with intermittent fasting. And you know, we recognize everyone's right to have different opinions about things in your regular life but here we're going to talk about intermittent fasting and we're going to stick to that topic so i also think that people really enjoy having a place where we can just support one another with intermittent fasting no matter who you are or where you come from we are here for you now for those who haven't listened to our first interview um, that we did last year would you tell us a little bit about your journey with intermittent fasting and how it's just completely changed your life i would love to i'm 51 at this point and um you know my many many years of my adult life i struggled with my weight um to make a long story short in 2014 i found myself at 210 pounds which was obese on my five foot five frame and i'm also small framed small boned so that was that was a lot of weight for me to be carrying around and so i i really realized i needed to do something i'd been yo-yoing up and down for years looking for that magic you know, what was going to work for me. And, and it was intermittent fasting. So I went on to lose over 80 pounds and I have been maintaining the loss ever since. You know, I hit my goal in 2015 and um, continued to get a little leaner over the next few years after, after hitting my initial goal and, you know, found myself maintaining at a smaller weight than I'd ever, ever been able to maintain my entire adult life. I'm really pretty much my high school size, I think I would say. And, um, but it's effortless. I know that sounds crazy. You know, after all the yo-yo up and down, up and down, you know, if I find myself like at the beginning of quarantine, I was doing a little more cookie baking than, than normal. <laughs> I think we all you know, were. <laughs> my honesty pants got a little fluffier. You know, stress definitely plays a role as well. And we were all like, what is happening? What is going on? You know, we couldn't even get the food at the grocery store, right? Um, things were sold out and it was crazy. If you found something, you bought it and then you cooked it, right? So, um, but you know, sticking to intermittent fasting, you know, I'm, I'm right where I need to be and maintaining well, today. I'm wearing my, actually my tightest honesty shorts and they're comfortable. Well, I think it's the biggest thing, just finding something that you're comfortable with. I mean, a lot of my audience knows that, uh, you know, my own journey, 2011, I was near 340 pounds and doctor said, Hey, you're right at that borderline for type two diabetes. Um, high blood pressure if you don't get your act together you're dead in five years and that that moment completely changed my life where i was able to lose the weight and keep it off and then i went to write write my first book about it which is eat less move more and here we are 15 books later and it's just it's just amazing how one decision can completely change your life it's true one decision really can and you know that day i clicked create group on facebook and started my very first Facebook group. We just passed the five-year anniversary of, of that um, group creation date, and we celebrated it in the group. And, um, you know, that group is actually, it had gotten to over 100,000 members, and then I closed it to new members because I'm trying to, you know, keep the keep the new members in one place so we can help them with their, you know, newcomer um, questions. But it was just great to celebrate with them. And then, and that was like the biggest moment I think that changed everything, starting that group. And I started it to support myself and, you know, with my friends that were also doing intermittent fasting and who knew it would turn into a worldwide kind of a thing where, you know, people all over the world have joined the groups, found success with intermittent fasting, told their stories on my podcast, intermittent fasting stories. You know, we've had people from all over the world on the podcast and it's just thrilling to see the impact that one little tiny create group moment has changed my life and the lives of of a lot of other people well and as a past guest of your show as well i highly recommend it especially for people that are looking to make changes in their lives because i started minute fasting now over a year ago 
and it truly was a game changer. And I found it through another doctor I had making that recommendation. And Jen, how did you find intermittent fasting? Was this something you were already considering? Was this something you discovered when you decided to make that decision? How did you initially discover intermittent fasting for you? Well, you know, I for years when I was trapped in that yo-yo weight mindset and cycle, I read every diet book I could find. Or uh, at least I would go to the, the bookstore and browse the diet section and pick up different books and say, oh, I might could try this or oh, uh, that one I'm definitely not going to try. But I, I knew what all the diets were. And so, you know, someone that was so in the diet community as I was, I, um, I stumbled across intermittent fasting probably in 2009. And, you know, there were a few protocols at the time. There was Eat, Stop, Eat with Brad Pallon. There was the Fast Five Diet and Lifestyle, which was a, a five-hour eating window, um, Dr. Burt Hearing. There were a couple of alternate day type diet programs. One was Dr. Johnson. I can't think of his first name. He had an um, up and down day approach. There was the every other. Or QOD was one of them. It was a, I can't remember his name either, but it was. So those were the books I really started with, but they were all different intermittent fasting protocols, but they all said the same thing. And they were eat the foods you love, just not all the time. You know, whether it was having with, with eat, stop, eat, you would have a few 24 hour fasts a week and, and just eat normally the rest of the time. Or whether you're doing your eating window, that was, you know, Dr. Herring's approach, have a five hour window and eat within that window or the every other day, diet one day, eat normally the next. Those really resonated with me. And I just, I didn't want to have a bunch of dietary restrictions or rules or eat this and don't eat that. Instead, figuring it out by time seemed like a much better way for me to still live the life I wanted and manage what I was eating within an, a period of time. But I couldn't make it a lifestyle. And, you know, I know, understand now why. I understand the physiology of fasting so much better. Basically, I wouldn't give it enough time for my body to adjust. And so I would try it for a few days and then I'd get sidetracked. And so basically I was always trapped in the adjustment period. And with intermittent fasting, you really do have to give your body time to adjust. So if you keep starting and stopping, it's going to be a lot harder for you. Also, that was you know well before one of the other books that changed my life, Dr. Um, Dr. Jason Fung's The Obesity Code. It came out in 2016. And even though I'd already reached my goal by then, it really changed my life to read his book and understand the role of insulin and in weight gain and weight loss. And something that I, I was always doing, I was putting stevia and cinnamon and you know vanilla cream stevia, it tasted delicious in my coffee and, and considering myself fasting. And when I read Dr. Fung's book, The Obesity Code, I understood that um, when your body thinks you're consuming food or you know stevia, something sweet, something that tastes like food, it causes your body to release insulin in response for the sugar calories that, that it thinks are coming. So um, I was keeping my insulin high all day long by having, you know, fruity, um, bubbly water or, you know, coffee with stevia in it or chewing gum all day long. And so I, I changed what I was doing and switched to what I now call the clean fast, sticking to plain black coffee, plain water, unflavored fizzy water. And that changed everything instead of white knuckling it to my eating window i was able to fast until i was ready to open my window with no trouble so um i we now call that the clean fast and the that terminology came out of my um, intermittent fasting support group probably around 2017 is when we started using that lingo because it really just describes you know when you fast clean your body really has a break from insulin production from um from you know, digestion, and it can focus on things like actually tapping into your stored fat and um, and repairing the repair process that goes on during the clean fast. I mean, you don't get down to zero insulin. I want to make that clear. We always have a baseline amount of insulin circulating in our bodies, and we, we have to. That's an important thing we need. But what we don't want to have is hyperinsulinemia, which is constant high levels of insulin. So when we fast, we don't send those pump out more insulin signals so that we get it as low as we can during the fast. So you've mentioned windows a couple of times. Could you mention the windows to our audience and also the window that you started with and how that has evolved over time? Because I know in my own journey, my windows changed a few times just in this past year. What's really funny is I started, like I said, with Dr. Burt Hearing's Fast Five program, and that was really the only book 
that talked about eating windows. I mean, it was until the, the eight hour diet came out that the eight hour diet came out a few years later, but and a lot of people have probably heard of 16, eight, that would be eight hour eating window, 16 hour fast. That one, by the way, did not work for me for weight loss. Not at all. <laughs> I can eat a lot of food in eight hours and 16 hours was not enough time for, um, for my body to tap into fat stores and lose and lose the weight. But I started really with that fat five hour eating window. Now, Dr. Hearing, um, structures his five hour eating window from 5 PM till 10 PM. Well, I shifted mine a little earlier because by 10 p.m. most nights, I'm already in the bed. So <laughs> 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. was really a great eating window for me um, in early days. And when, when I really adjusted to that, and it was in 2014 when I was like, all right, this is really what I'm going to do. In 2014, I was really, I would basically wait till I got home from work. And I was a teacher at the time. So really, I would open at about 4.30. And, you know, some days it would be open the whole five hours, but not always. And that was a really good eating window for me. Um, now, it, it does vary from day to day. I've tried all the approaches over the years, whether it's the alternate day fasting, a 5-2 approach, which would be two full fasts a week with five, quote, regular eating days. I've mixed it up with a hybrid approach that I talk about in Fast, Feast, Repeat. And now, I've, I've been doing the daily eating window approach nonstop since 2016, Um that's really the summer, summer of 2016. So for four years now, I've eaten every day. I don't skip days of eating now, even though I have experimented with um, the alternate day fasting in the past. And my sweet spot is waiting until some point in the afternoon to open my window and then closing it at some point after dinner. Um, I loosely consider it a one meal a day approach because I don't eat lunch most days. I definitely don't eat breakfast. I don't eat lunch. And I will usually open with some kind of a hearty snack, you know, keeping in mind that I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm definitely in a maintaining stage. So, you know, I want to eat till I'm satisfied. So I'll have a, a hearty snack and then later I'll have my dinner and then I'll close my window after that. I don't time my eating window now, but um, I think most days it probably stays within the four to six hour range, somewhere in there. So with yours currently, you are doing the OMAD, the one meal a day and then with snacks what? throughout? Yeah, I, I consider I, you know, the, the phrase one meal a day is um, interesting to think about because I actually my first group that I started in 2015 is called the one meal a day intermittent fasting lifestyle. And that's the one that's closed. No one can join it now. But it was the only one meal a day group on Facebook. And, and it was structured around the idea of you have an eating window, but you're really only eating one meal. Because one of my early confusions with the five hour eating window especially from the years that I struggled when I would try to do it is because I thought, all right, a five hour window, I'm going to have it start at noon and end at five. And then I'm going to cram two meals in there. And, you know, I could eat a lot of food if I'm trying to eat two full meals in a five hour eating window. And then I was reading Dr. Herring's first book, um, the fast five book that he wrote. And one little sentence in there finally jumped out to me. He said, you're only eating one meal. So, you know, he's talking about, you know, focus on high nutrients. And I'm like, he intended his five hour window to be one actual meal, not trying to cram as much eating into five hours as you can. That might sound dumb, but that was an aha moment for me. I was like, oh, because <laughs> prior to that, I was like, all right, five hours, start, finish, go, you know. But once I realized our goal is not just to eat for five straight hours, I was like, all right, our, my goal is to have one actual meal within this window. And so for me, that's dinner. I structured around the dinner hour. And so, you know, that doesn't mean one play today or 23 one, meaning a, a one hour eating window. You know, there's some purists out there that have come along in the years since my one meal a day Facebook group started. And people have attempted to define one meal a day as 23 one or one play today. And you know, I, I prefer not to get caught up in semantics because, you know, I consider myself to be someone who eats one actual meal a day, dinner, not lunch, not breakfast. I, I consider it one meal a day, but it's not one meal a day and that's all you eat and you eat it in a short time period. So does that make sense? It does, and I'm really glad that you clarified that because I did not want to have to explain that <laughs> just because there's so many different pieces well, involved with it and you have to find like what works. People are nuts about terminology. And yes. I feel like y'all quit. Who cares? Call it whatever you want. <laughs> you know, 
And they're like, well, I don't understand what's the difference between 19.5 and one meal a day. And I'm like, look, I don't care. Your goal is to have an eating window that feels right to your body. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm, you know, I'm 5'5". Five five, I'm sitting here in size zero shorts today. I could not eat enough bod enough food for my body if I had a one-hour eating window every day. That would not be enough food for me. I could not cram enough food into my little stomach in one hour to fuel my body. I need to have a longer eating window. Um, but I, I'm not eating two complete meals. And I like to think of it as like a meal at a, at a fine dining restaurant. You know, think of it as courses. You maybe you open with a salad and then later you have some soup and an appetizer and, and then your main course. So think of one meal a day as a multi-course meal. You're ordering from different sections of the menu. You're not having two entrees. You know, we all understand going to a, a restaurant. You don't order two entrees. You have the different courses. That's what I think of as a one meal a day approach. And if someone thinks that that's not one meal a day, I don't care. Call it whatever you want. <laughs> you have my permission to call it whatever you want. Well, and I love that because I know one of the main themes that we've had in our conversations is the fact is it has to be what's best for you because right. what works for you may not work for me. What works for me, it's not going to work for the next person. You just have to figure it out because I tried doing the one meal a day thing and just me digestive wise and everything else, it didn't work. You know, I'm 6'3", 280 um, with a lot of beef. So it's one of those things where I know my body is constantly burning. So I want to make sure it's going to be the best fit to do right. that. And the other thing I wanted to ask you, um, the role of exercise in your journey as well. Well, the role of exercise in my journey has been very minimal. Um, interestingly, I'm, um, one of my big areas of interest in is, is biodiversity and how our bodies are all different when it comes to, you know, what foods work for us. And even when it comes to exercise, and I talk about this in Fast Feast Repeat, genetically, some of us are more likely to need to exercise to lose weight than others. And when I had my DNA analyzed, um, I ran it through one of the main, the main programs that everybody's heard of. And then I downloaded the raw data and have run it through some other platforms that then, you know, will analyze the, um, the SNPs for you. And I was not surprised to get the result that my body is one that exercise doesn't tend to make a huge difference as to whether I lose a lot of weight or not. And that's what I found with my experience my entire life. You know, I would start an exercise regimen, you know, the whole eat less, move more, moving more. I did all the things. And I never once found a huge correlation between the exercise I was doing and, and losing weight. Now, somebody else may be hearing me say that and think I sound like an idiot because every time they start a weight loss program, that makes all the difference in the world for them. They probably have the genetic profile where they, their weight loss is strongly correlated to exercise. Yep. So I believe there are people that really, if you want to lose weight, then exercise is going to be more important for you. For me, it hasn't really been. That doesn't mean that I, you know, want you to be a couch potato, um, be active in your daily life. I have a chapter on this in fast feast repeat. You know, I prefer to get my activity from, you know, like today I'm, I'm, I'm doing some laundry and hauling around the laundry baskets. I stripped the, the sheets off the bed and just tugging those sheets into position when I'm putting them back on the bed, you know, I'm, I'm working my muscles. And yep. so I prefer to do things like vacuum the floor, mop the floor, you know, functional movements just throughout my day. Um, I'm also a fidgeter and, you know, there's a lot of research on people who have a lot of, you know, fidgety movements tend to just, you know, burn a lot of energy just throughout their day. So, um, you know, that, that works for me really, really well. I'm not going to go to the gym. I'm not going to, you know, run, run out on the street. I might stroll around the neighborhood after dinner with my husband. I have a rebounder. I enjoy jumping on it, but I, I might jump on it for five minutes and that's it. You know, I don't, I don't do a lot. I have a hula hoop I'll use every now and then. I have a vibration plate I'll stand on, but that's really it. You know, um, I would not say that exercise played a huge role in my weight loss is exercise and moving your body and being strong and keeping your muscle mass up. Is that important for health? Absolutely. I don't want to lose muscle mass, but I, um, one thing about fasting and fasting clean is that we've found it does help preserve your muscle mass. You know, being in the, the clean fasted state tends to, um, elevate your levels of human growth hormone, which is great for maintaining muscle mass or building muscle mass. If that's your goal. And I love you know, that you as a, oh, I was just going to say, as a 51-year-old woman, maintaining muscle mass is definitely important. 
No, I was just going to say, I love that you've mentioned that so specifically because the thing is, everyone's different. And I think that's the biggest thing people need to understand from any type of lifestyle change, any type of change in diet is you have got to figure out what works best for you because what works, what people say on TV or in the media and articles, whatever, those things may not work for you. You've got to figure out what's going to be the best fit for you. And yeah, as my example, you know, for me, I do need a little exercise to go with it. And what, one thing that you and I talked about before we recorded this was just like yourself, I got a little fluffy during that first month of COVID and I needed something that one kind of took away the stress a little bit, but two, I was able to create an exercise routine because I was in a bubble at the house. And then I started getting on my former coat rack, my exercise bike. And last right. week we celebrated 150 days in a row on that. But it's really more for mental health than for physical. But a nice side effect is, is that part of it's kicking in as well because right. I did lose that. Uh, you know, people talk about the, the college 15. That was probably like the COVID 10. But it was nice right. to kind of take off that COVID 10 by having that routine in addition to imminent fasting and just realizing what works best for you because it's it's not necessarily a one size fits all thing. You have to figure out what's going to be the best for you and then implement it that way. And that's what I've seen a lot from your teachings with your book, with your advice that you give. Exactly. And, you know, if you're someone who knows that your body needs to, to have a certain type of exercise regimen for you to lose weight, then don't say, well, Jen didn't, so I shouldn't have to. I mean, this mm -hmm. is what works for me and my body, and I know my body. And so, you know, if you know that exercise is an important you know, way for you to lose weight, then, then do what you know works for you. That's just, you know, it's very important. We are all so very different. Exactly. I think that's the biggest thing that people just need to realize is everyone's different with that. So shifting back to the book, I did want to ask you um, about any marketing strategies that you used in this launch um, that, that, first of all, that worked well, but secondly, was a little different from your previous book launches. Well, no. <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> the, the first book that I wrote in 2016, I mean, at the time, I felt like I had these really big groups, right? And they were like... Um, combined 5,000 members. Are you still there? I just lost. Oh, no, you're good. No, I was just, okay. I was just Sorry. listening because the it thing is you've evolved to that point now to being this New York Times bestselling author. I mean, that's an amazing jump. Yeah, I thought I lost you. Sorry. But yeah, <laughs> you're it good. felt like I, I had 5,000 5, members and it felt like really big groups. And so like the first day, I think I sold 100 and something books. I can't remember. But I was like, oh, my gosh, look, I sold 100. You know? <laughs> hundred and something books. And so, um, you know, I just talked about it in my groups. And what I found is I, I don't like to feel overly like I'm pushing something or yeah. overly salesy. And so, you know, I just shared, like I would share with a group of friends. Um, you know, I, I want people to want to buy my book because they find value in it and they're going to love it. That That's my goal. And so, you know, I try to balance my excitement with the book and Here's my book, and I hope that you choose to read it. And and that's really the message that that I wanted to get out there. And, um, you know, the moderators were really excited, and I think that really helped. And you know, all this it just happened, you know, organically, really. But um, my publishing house, I'm with St. Martin's Press, which is a div division of Macmillan, so they were able to get advanced reader copies out to the moderators that work in my my Facebook support groups. And so that was a whole lot of fun, and I think it drummed up excitement because. You know, the moderators were reading it early and then they were sharing in the groups about some of what they were reading. So that helped people be excited about it. But really, the community was just fantastic. I'm so grateful. I want to get that out there. I'm grateful for every member of my Facebook community who supports each other so positively every day and, you know, gives me something to do every day and you know, to celebrate with them and, you know, as they support one another, really. And, you know, I want to thank them for also you know, promoting the book and buying the book and telling their friends about it. And that's the beauty of intermittent fasting is it's truly one of those grassroots movements that when you begin to live the lifestyle and you feel so wonderful and your health turns around and suddenly you lose, you know, what I like to call your diet brain and you're yes. just freely living your life and enjoying food, you feel good in your own skin. You want to tell people about it. And that's really how my journey started, telling people about this amazing thing and people looked at me like I was crazy for a while <laughs> and um, you know now that intermittent fasting is is I would like to say it's mainstream now but oh yeah as it's 
it's mainstream and becoming even more mainstream, you know, I want to make sure that people are successful with intermittent fasting because my goal is not for a lot of people to try it and then move on to something else. My goal is for people to try it, make it work for them, be successful, change their lives. That that's really, that is, that is my mission here is, is to help people change their lives and transform themselves permanently and not, you know, looking for the next best thing. This is the thing. This is the thing that <laughs> that is there for you. And it's so flexible and it um, it will change your life. So, of course, you were asking me how I marketed the book. And really, as I said, I'm grateful for my community. And I, I feel like the community is marketing it themselves because they're so excited with their own transformations. And, you know, you can't ask for anything more than that. Well, and the thing is, too, um, I've been part of your group now for, for about a year it doesn't feel like a group. It feels like a movement. And the fact is, I'm seeing every day in there these amazing transformations. So clearly, it does work. I've been using it for a year. You've been using it for, for, for years. I mean, the thing is, it works as long as you find what's best for you and you put the time into it. But I love the fact that your group, first of all, it's so well monitored. But the other thing is that it's so positive. And I just love, right. I mean, it's like every day you are celebrating someone's transformation in there. And that's just huge. Yeah, it really does feel like a movement. And that's what's so thrilling. And, you know, I invite people to join our movement, but only if you can come and stay. <laughs> stay is a positive <laughs> contribution. You know, I want to point that out. We will be there for you. We want to hear your struggles as well. If someone is struggling with intermittent fasting, we don't want to hide that. We want to put it right out there and let's troubleshoot together because it's not, you know, a, a painless process for everyone. Sometimes, especially if you've been overweight, obese for a long time, you have a lot of metabolic healing to do. Yeah. We will troubleshoot with you. We, we're not just, you know, always fake sunshine. So I wanted to get that out there. But you know, we will support you in a positive way, I guess, is what, what I wanted to stress. Well, and the thing is, too, this is a lifestyle change. It's not a diet because the word right. diet doesn't diet doesn't work. I think I just use word die because that's literally what it feels like is your lifestyle. It's true. Yeah, it's it's it doesn't work. What works is when you make those changes where you embrace it, you embrace yourself and you're willing to make these lifestyle changes. I mean, I've never skipped a day of intermittent fasting since starting this. I never will because that is the commitment. I mean, yes, does the window change sometimes? Absolutely. But the commitment is there because I have seen my own body heal over time. And I know we talked about this a few months back when I was talking about some of these changes I've noticed, but I've noticed them even more now. And it really is amazing how this can change your body, both on the inside and on the outside. Absolutely. And, and it really, it, it does change you both inside and out. And you're going to find that it changes you for anyone, you know, who's listening and, and thinking about giving it a try, you know, in a year and two years, you won't believe how you're different. You know, like I don't go out and buy the latest and greatest, you know, everything anymore. I, I'm, I've become a minimalist in many ways. Okay. I'm not a minimalist. I have like five <laughs> sets of China or six. I don't even know. But <laughs> I'm not as much of a consumer oriented person as I used to be, if that makes sense. You know, fasting has simplified my life and in so many ways it kind of rubs off besides just, you know, the, the fasting and the weight loss. You know, I, I have a healthier approach to so many things. So speaking of books and the movement and everything, I want to ask, and not your all time favorite book because we covered that last time, but what is your current favorite book? And what is the main thing that you're learning from it right now? Well, I I don't make as much time to read as, as I probably should because, like I said, I'm so busy managing these Facebook support groups that are 24-7. Yeah. But I'm reading Atomic Habits um, by James Clear. I'm going to the beach this weekend with my husband and my son, and I'm going to take – I have a physical copy of Atomic Habits, and I'm going to um, make some time to read on the beach. On the beach, I do well with a physical book. So um, – I'm going to read that. What I love about Atomic Habits is it really, you know, I started reading and I read the beginning the last time I was at the beach and it just resonated with intermittent fasting so very much. You know, you, he talks about, you know, you design a lifestyle that supports your goals and that really is what we want with intermittent fasting. You design a lifestyle that supports your health goals and that's what intermittent fasting will do for you. So Atomic Habits, and this is fun. He and I, he's probably still on the New York Times bestseller list. I was on there for two weeks, 
and he was right next to me one week. So that was really fun. I'm like, I was four and he was three or something. So that was so much fun. I'm like, I'm reading this book and it's right beside mine on the New York Times bestseller list. That's pretty cool. It is. <laughs> well, Jen... I don't know if he knows who I am, but he might have seen my book cover next to his. So. <laughs> hey, there you go. You're in the neighborhood, right? That's right. Well, Jen, for our final question, what is your current favorite quote and why? Oh, my current favorite quote. Oh, mm-hmm. gosh. I don't think I have a favorite quote. Hold on. Let's see. Um, can I look it up for a second? I think we can take a moment and do that because I think everyone wants to know about this favorite quote of yours. And the reason I ask current is because, again, I know you're always consuming new knowledge. And what I love of the fact is that you also read a lot of books in the medical field. So you're, everything that you're doing with intermittent fasting is constantly being updated and it's constantly evolving and I love that and I love the fact that you're also sharing that constantly in these Facebook groups as well because once you get the information you're very generous about how you share it with other people all right I found it I have it saved as a meme it's Ella Fitzgerald this is my current favorite quote I couldn't like speak it out of my head so sorry I had to look (laughs) here it is I have the meme saved in my favorites folder so this is um attributed to Ella Fitzgerald um whether it really was her or not, I don't know. But it, I've, I, this is on a meme, and I loved it. It says, just don't give up trying to do what you really want to do. Where there is love and inspiration, I don't think you can go wrong. Well, I'd ask so you why, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, and, you know, I, I want to teach you through you know, reading my books to love your body. Yeah. You know, where there is love and inspiration. So focus that on loving your body. And so many of us have been angry at our bodies, frustrated by our bodies, not, you know, like our bodies weren't behaving. And once you shift that mindset to realizing that all along your body was responding to what was happening in a way to protect you, even, you know, things like type two diabetes, you know, you're like, why has my body done this? Well, it's responding and it's, it's trying to protect you and the, the confusing things that you've done, not really understanding, you know, what was happening. We were told to eat six small meals a day. We were told to do that. We were told that diet sodas were great for us because they had zero calories and that was just fine. We did all the things we thought that were good for us and our poor bodies have just responded the best way they could to all these confusing inputs that were not natural and not the way we're meant to live. So take a step back, love your body and work together as a team instead of feeling like you're fighting it. Jen, I want to thank you for being a guest on the show. What is the best way for people to find you online? If they go to jenstevens.com, Jen is G-I-N, Stevens with a P-H, you can find links to my podcasts, links to um, my largest Facebook support group, and um, really just send me a message if you need to. I do not answer emails with fasting questions though so (laughs) you can definitely join join the group and ask fasting questions there we'll definitely support you there but um also links to all of my books at at my website as well would you please tell us one more time the name of your facebook group um delay don't deny intermittent fasting support and in that group it's really really large so we had to change the way the group is managed so Members do not make new posts, but we have daily threads where you can ask a moderator or find find you know targeted support to what you need. We were having you know thousands of like over a thousand posts a day, and it was impossible to keep up with and give the kind of support we wanted. But if you are a more advanced intermittent faster, meaning if you've read Fast Feast Repeat, anyone who has read Fast Feast Repeat is eligible to join the Delay Don't Deny Advanced Book Support Group. So look for that one. Um, You don't have to be an advanced faster. You just have to have the advanced knowledge from reading Fast, Feast, Repeat. And you have to answer some questions to verify that you have indeed read it. And um, once you join that, you know, it's it's a more traditional group format. You can ask questions because we just we don't have people joining who have, you know, they don't understand the basics that that really took a lot of time. Um, So join the advanced group if you've read fast feast repeat join the regular group and um we'll answer your fasting questions there and you'll find all sorts of inspiration jen thank you once again for being on the show and i wish you all the best in your author and imminent fasting journey ahead thank you thanks again for joining us today to learn more about how to get your book published with a proven system that works 
grab a free copy of my book at getpublishedpodcast.com.